My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we're talking about oil starvation or more importantly someone asked me a question about I don't know if you'd call it a horn is what I generally call it but uh, someone sent me a picture and asked me a question of why is this the way it is where it is on other bikes and not on others if that makes sense so basically you'll see um, so we'll take uh, super sports and super bikes and basically generally bikes that are meant to go quite fast and what you'll notice is they'll have a sump that looks like this. And he was generally asking, why is just this protrusion? Why is there this bump? And the reason why is all to do with oil starvation. Now, um, what happens is, is your oil level will be something like this. And then you'll have your pickup tube, which will sit in here. And then it will go to your oil pump like so. And the whole point of this is one thing that uh, bikes have to contend with and cars don't is basically leaning over. So obviously if you have this and you lean your bike over like so, all your oil is gonna tip like this but that's still in the range of this um, pickup tube like so. And the same is backwards uh, the reverse so if you lean over to the right and stuff like that. The other thing that you have to take into consideration with motorbikes as well is the fact of um, the rate in which they can um, slow down, you know the rate they can stop and the rate that they can accelerate. So if we look at the front of the bike, so um, that way is going forwards like so. Again we have the same kind of thing where we have our pickup tube and obviously when you hard accelerate all the oil is going to do this, it's going to start to slot back um, due to uh, um, inertia, which is the resistance of wanting to move. And obviously when you slam on the brakes it's going to do this, but it's always in the range of that pickup. Um, you can see this with cars, so cars have you know, big fuel tanks and um, then they have their pickups and all the rest of it and then their return line and stuff like that. And in cars you'll have baffles and these are basically sometimes the, the full length and then they'll have holes in here and what this does is this stops fuel sloshing around. Um, so the fuel is in each cell like so and then when you you know when you whip around a corner bank really hard then the fuel level will tip in each individual one like this um, due to the g-forces and what have you but still then you're not starving the tank out. It also stops the fuel shifting to one side of the tank and then right to the other. So your weight distribution and your centre of mass pretty much stays um, in the centre, in a sense. So your centre of mass for this fuel tank will just say be there. And when you slosh around side to side, it will remain there. Now, that begs the question, and it was um, one of the other photos that this guy sent me. I think his name was Luke. Um is that you'll see other bikes like the ER5 that don't. So the ER5 has a very shallow um, oil sump, the actual uh, bottom of the engine. And you think, well, what's the problem there? Is it because the ER5 is not really a fast bike? Well, you can still lean it over. But what they do with the ER5 is this is where your sump ends, like so. And in the ER5 they have baffles as well. So your other casing that comes up here like this and it has all your engine bits inside it um, if you actually look at the underside you have your um, your main webs for your journals for your cranks that come all the way down to here like this and in a sense that acts like a baffle so when you corner quite hard and stuff like that it stops it all going to one side because in a sense these are like gates stops it sloshing to all one side so you can create uh, baffles that don't appear to be baffles um, just by looking at you know there's no separations and all the rest of it but that's it's kind of like integrated into the design so that's the explanation for that i hope that makes sense it was a really quick video really we're just on about oil starvation now i will do other videos about oil starvation 
in uh, certain applications and certain engines, especially there were some engines in the past during the 70s and stuff that used to suffer from oil and fuel starvation and stuff like that, so we'll look at them in the future. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.